Thanks for watching and today we'll evaluate a beautiful integral, namely the integral from 0 to infinity of 1 minus cosine of x over x squared. And we're gonna do that using the beauty of complex numbers. So consider the following function, f of z equals 1 minus e to the iz over z squared. And the reason we're choosing this function is because at the end we'll be able to replace z by a real number x and also then we'll be able to take the real part of this to get our original integral back. And in order to uh, calculate this integral we'll evaluate the integral of f over a very interesting contour namely uh, the following one let me draw this first of all so this big circle and this small circle and let me explain what this means so let capital R which is a very big number and epsilon which is a very small number be given then what we would like to do, we would like to evaluate the integral of f over this contour where uh, it starts off at epsilon, so very small, and then it goes all the way up to r in the real line, and then you go full circle, I guess half circle, up to minus r, and you go back to at minus epsilon, and lastly you do this little jump. Why do we do this? Well, we need r to be very big in order to get the real line, which will eventually give us integral from minus infinity to infinity of that. And also notice, here the function has a singularity at zero. So what this contour effectively does, it jumps over the singularity. Now, why is this nice? Notice, inside this region, this one here, f is perfectly smooth. It has no singularity, it's not defined, you know, it is defined everywhere in this region. So there's this beautiful theorem called Cauchy's theorem, which says that if f has no singularity in this region, then the whole integral over this whole curve is just zero. So what we know is the integral of f over the whole thing dz equals zero. So uh, all we need to do, we need to split this up into four parts. So this f, again, maybe let's call it one, two, three, four. Again, I might forget about this or not. So uh, this thing, we can just split it up. So this is the integral. Let's see. It's the integral over one of f plus the integral over 2 of f, plus the integral over 3 of f, plus the integral over 4 of f. And we know this is 0. And so for the rest of today, we will just uh, evaluate each integral separately. So let's first uh, do the first one. Again, like Imagine Dragon says, first things first. So let's do the first one, um, integral of f. So for this, you simply parameterize this as gamma t equals t from, uh, z from epsilon to r. And then, well, gamma prime of t is just 1. So in particular, this integral becomes a following. I don't want to erase this, but the integral of f over 1 by definition is just the integral from epsilon to r of f of gamma t times gamma prime of t dt. But in particular, since gamma t is t, we can just replace z by the real number t. So this just becomes the integral from epsilon to r of 1 minus eit over t squared dt. And then just be very careful, I, I'm not sure why, but it'll hopefully it will become uh, clearer why. At the end, let's first let r go to infinity and then let epsilon go to zero. 
So if r goes to infinity and epsilon goes to zero, again, by dominated convergence magic, we get that this goes to the integral from zero to infinity of one minus e to the i t over t squared dt. Okay. So that was for, for this line here. Now, for this line, absolutely the same. So in particular, the integral of over 3 of f eventually goes to the integral from minus infinity to 0 of f of t. Okay. And in particular, if you combine 1 and 3, you get the integral from 0 to infinity plus the integral from minus infinity to 0, which eventually gives you the integral from minus infinity to infinity of f of f of t dt. So the point is, uh, those two integrals were done with them. So we did that. So therefore, let's now focus on the big one. Okay, so Okay, so now let's focus on the big circle, which is just, I believe I call this two, and it's just a circle from minus r to r. Okay, and let's evaluate the integral of f over this contour. Now, now let's parameterize this. So it's a circle from zero to pi, so basically gamma of t equals e to the uh, r e to the i t. Where t goes from 0 to r, 0 to pi. And therefore, the second integral becomes as follows the integral of f of z dz equals the integral from 0 to pi of f of gamma t times gamma prime of t dt, and then all you need to do, take the definition of f and replace z by gamma t. So in the end, you find something quite horrible, but I guess it's doable. Uh, 1 minus e to the i, but not z, e to the i or e to the i t. Okay. Over z squared, so r e to the i t squared and then times gamma prime, so the derivative of this is ri e to the i t. Because this constant just jumps out when you take the uh, derivative. And then the idea is we would like to estimate this. So we want to put absolute values and eventually show that this goes to 0. So put absolute value here, absolute value here, absolute value here. And then we can just use the triangle inequality. So this becomes less than or equal to the integral from 0 to pi, absolute value of 1 minus e to the i r e to the i t, absolute value of r e to the i t squared, absolute value of r i e to the i t dt. Now, the nice thing is, this is just r, and this is r squared. So r over r squared becomes 1 over r. And you're left with the following. So you get 1 over r integral from 0 to pi, absolute value of 1 minus ei r e to the i t. Okay. dt, which by the way, it's already good. We have a 1 over r. So basically, you want to show kind of that this is bounded by a constant, hopefully. All right, so again, use a triangle inequality again. So this is less than or equal to 1 over r, integral from 0 to pi, and then 1 plus absolute value of this, e to the i, uh, r e to the i t. And you have to be very careful. This is not necessarily 1, because this might be a, the exponent might be real. So you have to watch out for that. And 
For this, let's just write this out. So this becomes EI, again, R cosine of T plus IR sine of T. And this becomes E to the I, uh, R cosine of T. And then E to the minus R sine of T. Just expand that out and now take absolute values as before. Now, uh, this is, uh, so this exponent is purely imaginary. So you do get um, one. And here you're actually very lucky because remember t is between 0 and pi. So therefore, uh, this sine of t becomes at least non-negative. So this minus r sine of t is less than or equal to 0. So you have to be careful. If we did it like the other way around, we would be in trouble. So in fact, this is bounded by a constant if you want. Okay, or I mean, worst case scenario, or I guess you can say less than or equal to uh, a constant. Okay, maybe one. Um, so in particular, what's nice is, so this is a constant, or like this is less than or equal to a constant. And since we're dividing this constant by r, if you let r go to infinity, you actually get 0. Yes, which is amazing, because uh, uh, we wanted it to go to 0. Right? And last but not least, I think we're just left with this tiny circle part, which I think is maybe the trickiest part. And last but not least, and this is the trickiest part, let's evaluate f on this little semicircle from minus epsilon to epsilon. So here we can sim still parameterize this as epsilon e to the i t, but you just have to be careful here. The angle now goes from pi to zero. So t goes from pi to zero, and in particular, what the integral of f becomes over the last piece it's simply the integral from pi to 0 of, let's see, it was 1 minus e to the i, and now epsilon e to the i t over epsilon e to the i t squared. And now remember to take the derivative, so epsilon i e to the i t dt. Okay. Now, very important, before we evaluate it, sorry, before we estimated this and show that it goes to zero, but here we actually have to evaluate it. Why? Because what did we get? On the one hand, we had our integral. On the other hand, we had a thing that goes to zero, and hopefully here it will we'll get something non-zero. That would be nice. Um, all right, in particular, well, we can cancel out a couple of things. So this epsilon and this e to the i t cancels out with one of the factors in the denominator. So what you're left with is i, I guess more precisely minus i, integral from 0 to pi, because we want to flip it, and uh, 1 minus e to the i epsilon e to the i t over epsilon e to the i t. And now remember, we want to evaluate this integral, so there's possibly other ways of evaluating this, but uh, here we will put on a little applied math hat, and let's do it with Taylor expansion. So here I'm just using that e to the z is 1 plus z plus z squared over 2 factorial, etc. And I will explain what's going on. So then we get minus i integral from 0 to pi of, okay, so 1 minus 1 plus this thing, so, um, sorry, 1 plus i epsilon e to the i t plus um, i epsilon e to the i t squared over 2, da, 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 okay, over, again, epsilon e to the i t dt. 
And the nice thing is, well, it does a lot of things simplify. So this one minus one simplifies. And moreover, we have a bunch of minuses and they also cancel out. And what we're left with is the following, that is i times integral from zero to pi of, well, i epsilon e to the i t, and then plus, well, epsilon squared, and then some junk, plus epsilon cubed, and then some junk, and a lot of junk, but I do want to emphasize this junk is bounded because at most it has modulus at most one. So it's kind of epsilon plus controllable junk. And you still divide it by epsilon e to the i t. So what you're left with, again dt, uh, what you're left with is i integral from 0 to pi, and then the nice thing is here, it just cancels out. So we have i, and then, mm, let's see, and then epsilon, again, junk over e to the i t, which is still junk, and then epsilon squared times junk, etc., etc. But you see, this is kind of just of the order O of epsilon. So what this means, it's kind of in this case, epsilon plus some bounded junk. So actually pretty nicely controlled. And then mm, all that you're left with is the following, uh, just this i, because the, remember we would like to set epsilon go to zero. So as epsilon goes to zero, what we're left with is what well, i times i, so minus one times integral from zero to pi, dt, and we're just left with minus pi. But careful, this is not the final answer, because remember what we had. So this is our big summary. Remember what we had? We had those four parts, and we said that, well, if you add in the first part and the second part, and you let r goes to infinity and epsilon go to zero, again, in that order, you're left with the integral from minus infinity to infinity of what you want. So one minus e to the i t over t squared dt. And then this second part was the integral over the big circle. We said that as r goes to infinity, this goes to zero. And finally, we've seen that as epsilon goes to zero, this term actually goes to um, minus pi. Okay. And so we have this integral minus pi equals zero, and therefore, this integral, 1 minus e to the i t over t squared dt, it equals pi. And well, almost last but not least, but just take real parts on both sides, and you end up getting, so the real part of e to the i t is cosine of t. So in the end, we have that. The integral from minus infinity to infinity of 1 minus cosine of t over t squared dt equals pi. And at the end, well, if you want the integral from 0 to infinity, uh, it's just pi over 2. Over t squared dt. In the end, it's pi over 2. So beautiful complex analysis extravaganza. So I hope you like this. And if you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.